What's going on guys and welcome to the first episode of my FIFA 15 career mode. Yes, here we are. I'm so sorry I couldn't upload any episodes earlier on during the week, but unfortunately I didn't get the game until yesterday, so I spent the entire day yesterday getting a lot of footage for you guys. And um, yeah, I really hope you guys are going to enjoy this career mode. Of course, we will be starting at West Brom. Uh, they won the poll, they won the straw poll I uploaded during the week. So thank you to everyone that voted. We had so many people getting involved on that poll. And thank you so much to all of you guys for voting. West Brom did indeed win the poll, which means we will be starting at the Hawthorns for our career mode this year, which is totally fine with me because I wanted to start there anyway. So that should be good fun. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting challenge, of course, with West Brom. You know, they're a, a Premier League side and they are going to be quite difficult to manage in the first season because we have been given a decent budget of £12.8 million. Um, we got a 60% bonus for playing the game last year or something like that, which is good. But even so, it is quite hard to find very decent players available on the cheap, particularly in the first season so I think it could be a difficult challenge this at West Brom you know we're de definitely not going to be you know aiming for the Champions League places within the first couple of seasons but you know just consolidating a place in the Premier League is our main aim with West Brom so really excited to get going as you can see we get ourselves straight into the emails uh, the board tell us they want us to reach the round of 16 stage in a domestic cup and they also say they want us to finish in mid table in the Premier League those are our objectives for cup and league and uh, also as well they gave us a scout report and said that they want us to sign a centre back now that's not a real surprise because this West Brom squad is not too bad you know I said just a second ago it, it's not a great squad don't get me wrong it's a decent side but the defence of this team isn't really the best it's a bit of a weak link here uh, the full backs aren't the best and the centre half area is not too strong either even though they just, uh, just got Jolie and Lescott it's not too amazing, but at the end of the day, we're definitely going to be looking for a centre-back ourselves. We're probably going to do that regardless, but the board did say they would like us to sign a centre-back. As you can see there, the assistant manager, we should look for a centre-back, which is kind of cool, because I don't think that ever used to happen on FIFA before. And uh, we'll take a look at some of the options. There are players like Shawcross and Nastasic and Johnny Evans and players like that who we'll look at and we'll see if we can sign any of them to improve this defence. But here is a look at the squad report as well. You can take a look at the squad is so far, the, uh, what score we've inherited here at West Brom. Um, as I said, it it's not too bad, you know, it's it's actually pretty decent in some areas, particularly in the centre midfield area, there's some decent players Sessegnon, uh, Malumbu Claudio Jacob, James Morrison's not too bad, you know, so a, a decent central midfield area, I've got to admit here at West Brom but as I said, defence is the key area in my opinion, which needs to be strengthened as soon as possible, so we'll definitely be looking into that, the wide areas aren't the best either, Varela's obviously on loan from Porto, he's quite decent and Chris Brunt's got a good end product, but not too much pace, uh, the strikers are good, Obviously, our day is a decent striker, a new signing for West Brom. Berahino's got a lot of young, uh, he's young, he's got a lot of talent. And there's uh, obviously Victor Anachebi on the bench as well, physical presence. But uh, yeah, we do need to improve this squad a little bit. But it's, it's a good starting team, if you know what I mean. It's a good team to start out for the career mode. We can uh, use some of the class players they've already got, some of the good players they already have in their squad, and also try and add to it with a few of our players, a few transfer targets ourselves. The first player we're going for is Callum Chambers on the loan list, because even though we do have £12.8 million to spend, it's not actually a lot. You'll be surprised how quickly you can get through your budget on FIFA if you've never played career mode before. £12.8 million at the start seems pretty decent, but believe me, your budget will run down very, very quickly um, if you just sign two or three players. So I'd like to get a player on loan just to make sure he only costs us a wages for the season. And Callum Chambers, well, you're not going to say no to him, are you? Can play right back and centre back, so he'll be perfect for that defensive cover I've been talking about. And obviously, he is a decent young player at Arsenal right now. We also put a bid for Ryan Shawcross, and we'll wait and see what Mark Hughes says. And also, put in a bid for Kieran Trippier of Burnley. Uh, I think Trippier's a really underrated right back. I really do. Had a great season for Burnley last year in the Championship at Turf Moor. And I do believe he could be a very decent right back for us. Because obviously... The centre back area is the main area I want to improve on, but the full back area isn't great as well. So Trippier coming in could be a good signing for us. But as you'll see, Shawcross, uh, we're probably not going to be able to sign him because they didn't accept a bit of six million pounds plus McCauley. And as you'll see, that will be half our budget. So I don't think we are uh, going to be able to get Ryan Shawcross, even though I'd like to. So we put in a straight bit of six point five million, and we'll wait and see what Mark Hughes says. Arsenal did indeed accept the loan offer for Callum Chambers, though, so I'm very pleased with that. He becomes our first signing, and Callum Chambers is a decent player, of course. Callum can play right back, can play centre back as well. So he's a decent player for cover and he comes in on loan. So very, very happy with that deal. Again, it, it's not the most dramatic, sorry, dramatic, not the most, um, you know, entertaining of signings, I guess, but not the most... Um 
and not not the most sort of starstruck signing you can make, if you know what I mean. Uh, but he's 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 going to be useful. You know, he's going to be useful for us, and that's the main thing. But we went back in for Kieran Trippi as well. Sean Dyche does not want to let go of his right back, which is not a real surprise because he is a very decent player. But I'm not particularly sure whether we're going to be able to pull this deal off. I think he's probably going to go for around three to four million pounds, which, quite frankly, is going to be about a quarter of our budget. And really, I don't particularly want to spend that on a right back who we may not need. Now we've got Callum Chambers in the side to compete with Andre Wisdom and Gamboa down that right flank. Uh, we put a bid for Matija Nastasic of uh, Manchester City, the 21-year-old Serbian centre-back is already 77 overall, which is a very decent rating for such a young player. And uh, as you can see, he's valued at 3.3 million pounds. But the reality is, he's worth at least double that, in my opinion, around 6.6. .6. So we put in a bit of 3.3 million pounds plus Gareth McCauley, but I can't see that coming off. And also, uh, Mark Hughes said he wanted 10 million pounds for Shawcross, so we just said no, it's not going to happen because, quite frankly, we can't afford to do that. Uh, we then decide to put in a bid for this player, Lucas Romero. He's an Argentine centre-back who plays in South America. And as you'll see, he's got some very good stats for a 20-year-old. Looks very handy indeed. We'd love to sign this guy. He's valued at, uh, sorry, his overall is 72 and he's valued at £1.8 million. Pounds. Um, personally speaking, he's just signed a new contract and he's got a six-year deal in Argentina, which means that even though he's a very good young player, very talented, and you know he, he, he may not go for too much money, with a new big contract like that, he's probably not going to be able to be signed for a cheap deal which means that we'll have to spend you know five million pound plus on getting that guy and personally speaking I don't think it's worth it right now um, we'll try and sign him I'd love to get him in because he does look very very talented but I don't think we'll be able to pull it off because I think he will cost us a bit too much money uh, Wes Atkinson our 55 rated right back is on his way to Notts County on a short term loan which is totally fine with me because he won't get into the team this season and if he can get some game time that's totally cool and also City don't want Nostasic uh, to leave because they don't want Gareth McCauley which is not a real surprise so we put in a straight bid of five million for Nostasic and and see what he says. Um, again, he's worth at least double that, in my opinion. 6.6 .6 million plus. Hopefully, it won't come to that, but we'll have to wait and see. He's definitely one of the centre backs I would love to sign. Been a new bid for Lucas Romero of the Argentine side, uh, Velez. I don't think we'll sign him again because of that really long contract and the fact he's a young, talented player. I think they're going to hold us to ransom, and the reality is we don't have the money to pay it. So, don't think we're going to sign him, even though I'd really like to, because I'm sure he's got good potential. And we've been a new bid for Kieran Trippi of 3.25 million pound plus Gareth. McCauley but I don't see that coming off either because nobody seems to want Gareth McCauley and uh, I just don't really feel like uh, we're going to be able to sign him anyway because he's going to cost us a bit too much money uh, City said he wants 7.5 million for Nastasic so I put in a straight bit of 5 million pound plus Olsen because Olsen is a decent centre half but he is in his 30s now and of course you guys know when a player hits 30s uh, player goes into his 30s he does decrease really really quickly in terms of stats so Olsen's slow, he's going to decrease very, very soon, and the reality is Nasazic is the younger centre-back for the future I really want to sign, so £5 million plus Olsen for me would be quite a good deal, maybe a little bit of an overspend, but as I said, Nasazic is a really good young centre-half, and he'll grow into a very decent one in time, so I don't mind paying that. Um, Burnley won't let go of Kieran Trippier, so I just cancelled negotiations, going to cost us too much money, and Manchester City and Manuel Pellegrini did indeed accept a £5 million deal and Jonas Olsen for Matai and Stasic. So again, maybe, maybe a little bit of an overspend, but uh, Olsen was on pretty high wages for this West Brom squad and he's getting old now. Uh, Nastasic is like 10 years younger and he's a very, very decent option for the future. He will grow into, you know, surely a low 80s type of player. So I'm very, very looking, uh, sorry, very, very happy that we look as though we are going to be able to get hold of Nastasic, which is good. And Velez won £8.5 million pounds for Lucas Romero and that was when I knew it was never going to happen because obviously Obviously, that would include Graham Dorrance. So you're looking at around 11 to 12 million pounds for the guy. Quite frankly, that's our entire budget. We're not going to be able to afford that. He's not at that level just yet. Maybe if he was at high 70s to low 80s, I wouldn't mind, but certainly not right now. And the statues declined the contract because we asked him to take a pay cut. So we give him what he wants at 60 grand a week, and we'll wait and see what he says. And as you can see, Velez just will not let go of uh, Romero, which is totally fine for me. Again, I'd love to sign him. I'm sure he's got great potential, but I'm not prepared to spend that much money on an unproven central midfield. Uh, Sam Byram, the Leeds right back. Uh, again, if we can't sign Kieran Trippi, we're going for this guy. Again, a very decent young right back, English as well. Looks very decent, but I think again we'll be held to, we'll be held to ransom over this player, which is annoying because I'd like to sign him, but I don't think it's going to happen. But we did see that Nastasic accepted his contract, which means Matai Nastasic is going to come in for five million pound plus Olsen going to the Etihad Stadium. So Nastasic comes in. 
77 overall does look very good again maybe a tiny bit of an overspend but for me I think he's going to be a great center back for the future you know that's that's what you got to look at here man seriously don't just look at what he is right now look at what he could grow into you know Nastasic already at 77 is a starting center back for us and he could grow into a really 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 talented one within the next three or four seasons but so we have one game in today's episode it is a preseason friendly against Cordoba now I don't usually play the preseason friendlies but I thought I'd play this one just just the first one and simulate the other two just to get a feel for the team and see how we could do get them some experience see how they play we almost took the lead in the 29th minute but uh, Varea's header from the corner was cleared off the line and uh, in the 36th minute we passed the ball out from the back pocket Nolly plays all four towards Brown a day uh, the striker gives it to Sado Berahino here those two are going to start up top together this season he rolls out wide to Chris Brunt who plays a cross field ball towards Brown a day the Nigerian striker takes it round his man with the fake shot shoot to his left foot and what a strike it is it is so powerful that is no chance for the goalkeeper. I thought at first maybe the goalkeeper would be a little bit disheartened to be beaten there at the near post, but when you watch it on the replay, the power that Brown the day got on that was unbelievable. Such ferocity in the shot, and he strikes it into the back of the net and makes it West Brom 1, Cordoba 0. So the preseason friendlies aren't really about the results at the end of the day. You know, They're more about how well the team plays, giving new signings a chance to show what they can do on the big stage in front of the crowd. And Brown the day, of course, wasn't signed by me. He was uh, signed at the club already when I came in gets the goal there makes it 1-0 and I'm confident he and Berahino could be a great strike partnership for us this season as you make it 1-0 just past Yalmark here in this preseason friendly it's Berahino in a day linking up again a couple of nice one twos here as Berahino fake shots around the defender goes through 1-1 one -one. I took the shot from just outside the area but the goalkeeper makes quite a comfortable save in the end and it's cleared away so I messed up that one really and it was still 1-0 and in the 83rd minute, it was quite a comfortable game for Ben Foster, where he didn't have too much to do. But as Cordova went forward here down this left hand side, they go inside, but Foster does make a good save at his near post to keep it at 1 0. So Cordova almost snatching a draw late on. But a few minutes later, as they pushed so many bodies up, trying to force an equalising goal, they left themselves vulnerable on the counter. And as Yusuf Malumbu wins the ball from the tackle here, Brown Aday collects the ball, rolls that wide towards Varea, back inside towards Ade, chips it over the last defender, picks out Sado Berahino, and Berahino makes it West Brom 2, Cordoba 0 in stoppage time. So Berahino makes it 2-0. That means we're going to win the preseason friendly. Of course, it's not really about the result. Like I said, it's more about just giving your players some fitness, showing uh, what they can do. But even so, it looks very, very encouraging. This season look, does look very encouraging on the base of this result. 2-0 against Cordoba. And as I said, both strikers scoring. Brown a day and Sado Berahino getting the goals. That's what we like to see. And I'm very confident this strike partnership could work wonders this season. I know Berahino he knows quite low rated for the Premier League at 68, but as you can see, he took that chance fantastically well. He makes it 2-0, and as you'll see, that was indeed how the game would finish as well, because directly from kickoff, the referee blows for full time. So, thanks very much for watching the episode, guys. That is the end of the episode, the end of the first episode. Thank you very much for watching it. I really do appreciate your support. If you can leave a like, then please do so. Show me you want some more career mode stuff. Leave a like on this video, and I might upload another episode of career mode later on tonight. So, thanks very much for watching the first episode of career mode. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I could see you for next episode of career mode later on tonight.